before we start, say uh, please use the chat, uh, communicate with us. Uh, we love the chat, send your questions to the chat, um, as many questions as possible. Uh, to start with, I want to ask you uh, if that's your first time joining NY Java SIG, and also where are you from? Uh, thank you once again for joining us. If you're not following NY Java SIG yet on the social media, please do it. Uh, here's our Twitter handle at NY Java SIG. We're very active on Twitter. Uh, all our leaders were constantly monitoring the Twitter. That's where we announce our events. And here, our YouTube channel at that uh, NY Java SIG, javasig.com, our website, javasig.com. Also, check our YouTube channel. You're here watching our event. Uh, our previous records are also available here in our channel. All right, uh, going to today's event, uh, we're going to be talking. Uh, the title of our event is Keeping Brazil Medical Industry Safe with Microprofile. Uh, we're going to tell uh, a case of migration to the cloud with microprofile in the Brazilian medical industry and the challenge that we're facing. Uh, our, we have two speakers tonight. The, our first speaker, Cesar Hernandez, he's a senior software engineer at Tommy Tribe, he's a Java champion, Duke Award winner. Oracle Groundbreaker Ambassador, Open Source Advocate. He's a, also a committer on Jakarta EE and Tommy Tribe. Oh man, he's a lot of titles, <laughs> Caesar. Uh, and he's also played in the band, the Java Community Band, the New Founders. Uh, our other speaker, Rafael Guimarães, is a software engineer for GBR system. He's focused on distributed software architecture. And he has over 25 years of experience in the area of software. Right. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for joining. Uh, Caesar, the show is all yours. Okay, so um, thank you. Thank you, Rodrigo, uh, Barry, Frank, and all the, the, all, all the New York um, Jog, the New York Java Seek. Um, thank you for the invitation. We're really happy to be here. Um, so Rafael, you can I start the, the screen sharing and 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 let's let's roll this this out. As Rodrigo said, um, feel free to send our questions. Uh, we like to be the we, we like to have a, as much as interaction as possible during the session. Either if you are on the Zoom or if you are following us on on YouTube, and if you are watching the recording. Feel free to 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 keep uh, asking questions there, um, and we will be happy to 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 reply. Um, a couple of interested uh, if, if, on Twitter, uh, you can follow obviously the the New York Java C, um, and also Rafael and myself on Twitter. Uh, so yeah, let's 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 just start, Rafael. Okay. So hi to everyone. Hi Cesar. Hi Barry. Rodrigo, Frank, uh, it's nice to, to be here presenting our present our 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 job. My and Caesar again. So we're gonna talk to today about the our case in industry medical industry from Brazil and how we make it safe with microprofile. Uh, as Rodrigo said, I am a software engineer and working for more than 20, 25 years of experience in medical and judicial areas in Brazil. And Cesar, uh, we don't need more presentations. He has many, many titles and many contributions in Java community, as Rodrigo said. So our agenda is, I'm gonna make some overview about Brazilian healthcare system, show our base system, and how we boost the Brazilian healthcare system with Jakarta E, Eclipse, Microprofile, and Apache Tomi. And uh, the new topic, here is the, our contribution to the COVID-19 response and some lessons learned. Well, uh, we have 
to to say to the public that Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world, a big area behind Russia, Canada, China, and United States, and the sixth largest population behind China, India, United States, Indonesia, and Pakistan. We have uh, 211 million people and 500 doctors, 500,000 doctors, and 152,000 health service providers in Brazil. It's a big, big, big country. We have five major regions divided in 26 states and lots of cities and one federal district. So the population is distributed more in Northeast and Southeast, as you can see here. And this is the, the one of the most important slides over here. We have in South the better conditions of health care because we have one doctor per a thousand people. This is recommendation from World Health Organizations. And, and at the Northeast, we have one doctor for almost 60,000 people. It's very difficult for one doctor to take care of 6,000 people. Okay. So here we gonna show, we gonna I'm go I'm going to show the main actors of this whole system. Uh, at the left corner we have a uh, medical practice. What is that? We we need a doctor, we need a patient, and we need a place that the doctor work and make his medical practice. So doctors need to be to leader need to learn to train to specialize and this they make at the medicine schools and the residency programs okay we have government health departments that control make regulation create policies makes sanitary surveillance provides license and keep important records okay and they work over this medical practice especially with the health providers and now at the the right side we have the medicine council medicine council is the place that the medical uh, that the doctor uh, received the, the, his license to work when they finish the school, he has uh, a, 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 a right to make a medical practice. So they make the professional discipline, ethical judgment of the medicine, uh, give license to work, keep records, make inspections, and um, takes care of complaints of the, the society and guiding the doctors. They are uh, composed about, uh, by counselors and inspectors. Okay, so our software works in this ecosystem here. Okay, we have some solutions to take care of each of part of that. So as we as we saw, the uh, Brazilian healthcare systems is large and complex. Uh, many inequalities and between different regions of the, the country. Uh, difficult governance. Uh, more than thirty different medical specialties with. 20 types of health service providers, the many, many flavors, and high frequency of policy and rule changes. 
about the medic scene practice. Uh, we have a poor, poor infrastructure with high risk to the people and to the doctors too, uh, and proliferation of medical schools. So we have uh, some bad quality doctors. Okay, this is a very big problem. I think it's not here in Brazil, we have this problem. Uh, and incomplete institutional information exchange because we have diversity of technology due to the, the, the size of the, the system, so very complex over the years, and many legacy systems and different standards. I think here is the one of the uh, I think microprofile uh, plays a very good uh, game uh, considering these challenges, especially legacy systems, different technologies helps help us a lot. So uh, looking this this is these this this ecosystems. Uh, we can make some questions to there. So how to make a good quality inspections report with agility, especially considering a high amount of laws, recommendations, policies, and standards, and to create good statistics of those reports. Uh, what could be done to facilitate inter interaction between the doctors and the council? which service providers or doctors we are working regularly. So our software need to respond to society and to the counselors and to the doctors, some of questions of like that. And how to do this with the uh, many complexities that we show. So then we found the GBR system in 2008. And recently we, we have the stuff growing. We, we put three, three guys in the team to, to help us with this, this, this challenge. And we are making consulting, software engineering and architecture and training during this time. And we make especially uh, to support inspectors and counselors in their principal job, that is professional discipline, guiding and inspections. We have online services that control the doctors and the service providers in their life cycles within council and to do quality auditing and certification of medical schools. So this is our three major uh, solutions that is running today. Here we have the Federal Council. Uh, there we, we have a software that supports inspectors and counselors in their principal job, as I, as I said before. And we have uh, three modules uh, that control inspections and scheduling, control uh, makes execution of the inspections with checklists, images, notifications, dynamic forms, and uh, a small BI platform that makes reports and some statistics. Uh, this software is ready, fully refactored to microprofile and is, is ready in homologation phase in Google Cloud. Uh, we use Microprofile, Tommy, and Tommy Tribe API Gateway. Uh, our plan is to put in production at the, end, at the end of this year. We migrate the system uh, 
in four modes, four months. Okay, so the version the the, the one point zero to two point zero. Any questions for all? It's okay. And we have the 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 regional council that we use the online services. What is that? Is where the, the, the doctor makes his first uh, just 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 after this his graduation in the school, he goes to regional council to take his first license to work. And we have a portal, service portal to to doctor uh, where the doctor makes his registration. And the, the, hey, they, they have many more, more than 40 types of services during this, this life, the life cycle in his life. So once a, a person becomes doctor, he will die doctor, you know? So during this time, he has many things to do with, con with the council. First registrations, transfers between states, secondary license, fee payments, certificates, profile updates, renew license, and many others. And we have tools for the back office employees. Uh, this software is already migrated in up and running in Google Cloud and part on premise inside the council. We have, uh, we use one year to migrate the five modules. Uh, the last one we migrate in three weeks because we had a uh, core part of the system in the APIs ready. And then the, the, the last module was very quick to, to migrate. Rafael, and, we have a question. Um, is the system only in public health? Is it only used in public health system, or does it also integrate with private providers? No, the, his, this system is uh, is running at the council, you know, uh, because the, the council is like American Association, I think. All right, thank you. So, yeah, so, so, so for, for giving more, more context, um, what Rafael is describing right now is three, uh, three, three main parts of the entire system. And, 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 and in, 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 the, in the next one, you will also see that there are some part of the modules that actually need to integrate with external providers like pharmacies. Uh, and, 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 and that is when we cross the bridge from going only from a system that is used by the public care system when it actually interacts with, uh, with private sector, if you want to call that the pharmacies and other entities uh, and insurance also. So, so it's a mix of both. I, I think Barry's, Barry's question, uh, I'm going to show this, this slide again. Uh, our software is it, no, it, it's not a software to to help doctors to make the medical practice. You know, our software works at the council to control the life cycle of the doctor, to to take care of his the ethical the ethical side of the the, the, the medical practice. Gotcha. But, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think later later in in the slides we are going to cover it as part of the COVID nineteen response um, how that what the, the what Rafael described is the original scope that brings this uh, this system alive uh, more than ten years ago, but um, we when the, the system has had needs to evolve into acting also as part of the actual life cycle of when when a, when a prescription is made. Um, the system also take care of part of that workflow that that comes from the output of a of a doctor uh, prescribing the, the the medicine. But uh, uh, we we're gonna cover that uh, in a couple of slides. 
Uh, and we have a, an accreditation platform called SIEMI. Uh, th this software we, we developed uh, three, four years ago, three years ago, two to three years ago, and support counselors and the Education Medical Association to do quality auditing and certification of the medical schools. Uh, covered the whole process of auditing and evaluation and was recognized by World Federation for Medical Education as the Brazil's main uh, platform. What is that? The, 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 this software addresses the problems that I, I tell before about the proliferation of the medical schools. So they, they, they saw uh, that schools were uh, uh, was graduate, graduating bad doctors. So they create this, this, this system to control the schools. Okay? And this module is pending of the immigration. We, we don't have a contract now to, to do this. Okay? So this is our basic base system, our base architecture that we migrate, that use uh, uh, Java 6, JBoss 7, Tomcat 6 and 7 uh, on the client, Angular GS1, Adobe Air, Adobe Flex. That integration use Keto and all running on premise. Okay. So, so th th this part of the diagram um, shows the, um, the evolution of the system as has, it was the original architecture design. Um, this, as, as you can see here, um, there is no cloud provider mentioned it um, because uh, assisting capitals, it was mainly, uh, I think it's uh, more than uh, 10 years ago to be uh, an on-premise. But as the system has grown and more, um, more uh, involvement has been done be even before the, the pandemic situation. Um, the system has needs to be deployed also on the infrastructure that these are these um, I would call it third parties, but it's actually the council and all the other regions. Uh, they need to deploy this in their infrastructure, and some of them have already cloud providers serving some of their IT IT um, uh, assets. Um, so the, one of the challenges, as we're going to see later, was how to migrate everything that Rafael has described in the system into an architecture that, that provides this hybrid approach and, and be portable across even across uh, vendor, uh, cloud, cloud vendors. So uh, today we have this, the national inspection platform at the Federal Council in Brasilia at the federal capital uh, is a software nationwide, okay? Uh, as the same at the accreditation of medical school same. And we take care of the portal, online services, and two states of the South, Rio Grande do Sul and Santa Catarina, my state. Okay. Some pictures of the, the base systems. This is the BI. So about the the, the backend architecture roadmap. We improve overall system architecture, uh, migrating Java 6 to Jakarta 8. We put more security, fault tolerance, performance, and monitoring. We introduced the API gateway with secure OAuth 2 plus HTTP signatures, microservice monitoring and routing, standard integrations, RMI, SOAP, REST. Uh, we use Cloud Native with different cloud providers, okay? We provide uh, APIs to other institutions, 
some institutions, like I said before, like other government uh, departments, need to integrate some information. Some that exchange between council and and these these uh, government sectors, and to move Javax to Jakarta namespace, and I, and we are using Docker container. Okay, this software, the Tommy runs inside the Docker container. I think, uh, Caesar, we're gonna change the the share. Sure. Um, I just want to confirm that everybody's seeing my my screen right now. Um, the slides. Um, so. Yeah. So as you can see, as, as Raphael described, um, it, 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 this is this is the story of, of usually when I when I when I'm presenting a really technical uh, um, a really technical I, I will call it um, a really technical session. People usually ask questions like, for example, um, Hey Cesar, Hey Raphael, uh, how how much does microprofile scale? Um, what what is all this thing with Jakarta going on? Uh, can you give me um, you know um, reference of where this has been implemented already? And and when we start getting those questions, usually the ones who delivered uh, technical, really deeply content. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's hard to 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 just uh, in, in two slides say, okay, you can refer this uh, use case or this white paper. So that's the, the purpose of this session was to actually uh, the first part, as Rafael has been described, the context, the stakeholders, and then now we're gonna jump into how the technical aspect were uh, a key also um, stakeholders to to make this 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 migration. Um, a reality that nowadays is is is, is providing um, to the Brazil uh, healthcare system a boost. Um, I want to just go back here. Um, something important here is that the standard integration when when this the system was created, as many in the industry twenty years ago or fifteen years ago, they are starting to integrate via. Um, um, SOAP web services. So obviously the modernization to, uh, to um, I wouldn't call it microservices yet by that time, but there was the necessity of providing a, a more lightweight approach and that open also for new startups, for example, new pharmacies that their base systems were uh, requiring restful integration. And that was one of the things that drive the attention um, when five years ago we start, I'm sorry, four years ago we start to work in um, with Raphael in actually trying to 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 see what will be the, the architecture um, just around the timing with microprofile and I'm gonna go a little bit if you are new to microprofile I, I have a, just one slide about talking about the project itself but that allowed to give us to save us a lot of time to modernize that soap architecture into a more uh, microservice oriented architecture at the same time it provides all that you are reading in that slide at the top. Um, and then what uh, this this uh, every system uh, uh, by theory is a, is a, is a living is a living piece right it's a living piece of software that it eventually will require some maintenance and now the first maintenance that we are starting to see is the necessity of if we are going to adopt the next version of Jakarta E um, which is going to be Jakarta E9 there is a name a namespace change from Javax to Jakarta that um, initially, as with many in the industry, uh, somebody could say, okay, it's just a namespace change. But actually, when you start analyzing not just your application, but actually your, your tool set uh, that you use for developing, monitoring, and orchestrate um, your Java deployments, it, you need to go and check if your vendor it also has that in the roadmap and when it's going to be delivered, because that could have an impact in your current plans of migration or modernization in, in, in that regard. So um, I want to say hello to Nia, who sent something here to say hello on YouTube, and also to Carlos um, Carlos Manuel. So thank you for for following the this, this, this streaming. Uh, feel free to 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 send your questions. Um, 
so let's jump um, now into the Jakarta E. Is this the first time you are here in this? Um, I'm pretty sure um, the, the 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 New York Galaxy has been has, has delivered specific sessions about it. But if this is the first time that you are seeing this, basically um, Jakarta E is what we used to formerly known as Java E. So now the project is hosted under the Eclipse Foundation. So every time I am referring Jakarta E. Um, is is basically Java EE, and at some point, if you are going to modernize your Java EE based system into a Jakarta version, um, that's I think that's that's still part of the evangelized uh, of, in the open source uh, of Java Enterprise to let uh, the community know and the industry know that now we need to call it, and you're gonna find reference for Jakarta EE with this target to you know to modernize and continue the the plus 20 years of the Java enterprise evolution. Someone told me, um, I usually get the question, uh, okay, but Jakarta E, you mentioned Eclipse, but Eclipse is the IDE. So no, Jakarta, yes, it's an IDE, but Eclipse Foundation is actually as a software foundation that hosted more than 360, um, three, more than 360 projects, open source project, and in the right, you, you can see in, on the screen many many numbers in terms of facts, and on the right side you can see many many industry uh, leaders who are using these um, projects, open source project from the Clues Foundation, and also um, contributed to it. And I always add this slide uh, because it's important for us to familiarize how these all st stakeholders interact. You have the Clues Foundation. Uh, I'm not gonna tell the story because that's a separate uh, a separate streaming session for that. But um, they, within the Clues Foundation, we ended up nowadays having two really important projects for the Java ecosystem. On the left side, you have the top level project EE4J which contain Jakarta EE and all the APIs that you can be using since Java EE. And on the right side, you have MicroProfile. So they are, they are under the same um, Eclipse Foundation. Uh, there are currently um, the discussion, the working group on the MicroProfile side of the fence and on the Jakarta EE side of the fence, every, we are preparing everything for doing the Jakarta EE9 release. Um, in the upcoming months, so, so so this is a really good time for you to realize that when you if you are going to modernize or or, or transform part of your plus fifteen years Java enterprise assets, this is a really good time to start adopting these new technologies, as as I will call. So, in terms of Eclipse MicroProfile, uh, well, first of all, it's an open source community specification um, from the right from the beginning. Uh, we in Tommy Tribe uh, and, and many others industry stakeholders uh, focus the problem of how to bring Java Enterprise into this modern ecosystem of microservices and all the challenges involved. So by that time is when we realized that microprofile, uh, that was when microprofile uh, arise, uh, arose. And the, the main um, stakeholders within, 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 within this open source project were, are the specifications. Uh, which I can tell to to someone who hasn't had the chance to see an specification is a PDF that describes what the technology needs to do, an API with are the contracts and interfaces that allow any implementers of that API to actually um, make a, 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 a reference imp an implementation for that, and the TCK that is the test compatibility kit that basically ensures you that even if you move from one provider of MicroProfile to another provider from MicroProfile, uh, the TCK ensures that both of them pass is this process of making sure that the implementation that they provide uh, passes all the all the tests that comply with the API and the spec. If you want to know more about um, MicroProfile, that is that is the the website. Um, but generally speaking, you will see that um, nowadays they, they have different uh, MicroProfile as the project has evolved and mature. Uh, we have uh, different vendors that have been implementing this on the open source side of the fence. And then obviously with support, uh, as in this case, um, we, Tommy try those with uh, Apache Tommy. Uh, the current and the latest version of MicroProfile is MicroProfile 3.3. Um, also, the question that I get often is, okay, when you're talking about microfile, that means I need to relearn Java Enterprise. And the, the, and the answer for that is no. If you see this first part, uh, I'm sorry, when you see this part, 
hopefully you can see my pointer. Uh, these are common APIs that you have been using for the past 10, five years. It depends on the, on the, on the matur maturity of your architecture. CDI, JSON, JAXA REST, JSONB. So uh, another another common term that I heard about microprofile people refers after explaining everything is, ah, okay, so microprofile is like uh, an extension of, J of Java EE or in this case, Jakarta EE. And I will say, yeah, you can see it like that. Um, um, and that is because as you can see here in these two rows, you are seeing APIs for the first time that are not currently part of the Java EE or the Jakarta the EE version you are using. Um, there is an entire session for each of these, and I'm pretty sure uh, here in the in the New York uh, in the New York Java C, you 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 have been having sessions specifically for these APIs. Um, but uh, general generally speaking, uh, open tracing, open API, config, propagation, security, health for for managing the status of your microservices, metrics to see how, for example, how many requests in the past hour your system has gone for the medical authorizations and the false tolerance. What happened if you are sending the doctor prescriptions to all the pharmacies, but the main pharmacy that is closest to the person's uh, um, address is not available, then you can fault tolerance and send that request to another one. Those are really quick examples on how we, we how we have been applying all these technologies. And but the takeaway from this from this slide is don't think on microprofile as something new that you are a uh, are, are fear of adopting because it will require a lot of rewriting. Uh, Raphael has explained that for one of the modules um, the, the, the number of lines is relatives in migrations, but it matters. But uh, let we let let, let, let we call that uh, two hundred thousand lines of code were were uh, modernized, not migrated, modernized in in a, in a couple of weeks, uh, in fifteen days. So you are just extending what you currently have and modernize it with microprofile. Uh, we have a question. Um, if part of the microprofile spec is not accepted and doesn't become part of the JDK J, J, JSR re rejected, how that will impact the project? Okay, that's that's a good question. So, uh, first, le thank you, Rodrigo, for the question. So, let's see. If part of the microprofile spec is not accepted, okay, so microprofile at this point is. Um, it's been ruled and the specification and, and, and the, all the stakeholders, and when I say all the stakeholders, don't think of that as, as just a couple of companies who are driving how microprofile evolved. It, they, they, there is actually a huge community around, around each release of microprofile. And it's within that community that the, um, the, the, the boat and how the release is approved, everything is managed within that. Uh, is not currently being ruled by a JSR related with the JDK. Obviously, microfile needs to make sure that uh, it's going to run, for example, in Java 14. Um, so that, that is obviously on Java 11. That is something that usually for backward compatibility and integration with existing architectures in microfile, every spec needs to take care of. But um, there is no impact. Uh, let me uh, know, Rodrigo, if I, if, if I didn't understand um, the, 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 the question, but there is no strong relationship that can block a microprofile release uh, if some specific JSR within the JDK is not approved. Again, obviously, the H, each uh, API from the microprofile point of view always want to make sure to be compatible with the latest uh, long-term LTE uh, JDK uh, Java release, right? Because that's where it, everything runs. And, and I also need to make sure that it's going to comply with the latest version available for the um, Jakarta EE, formerly known as Java EE. So to keep in sync, um, it, those those two aspects are, are always important, but they are not strongly tied in the sense that because one JSR uh, on the JDK is being rejected, that will impact strongly uh, on the on the, on the microprofile side of the fence. And so, sorry, that is I not. To ask, what's the go, go current ahead. release cycle for microprofile? That's a good. Just that's a, excellent. Thank you, Barry. Um, so. We we used to be we, we had been in the past two years we had been releases on a on a quarterly basis. Uh, right mm -hmm. now with the from from 3.3, .3, uh, 
uh, to the next version, there has been a little bit of delay, mainly because uh, there has been discussions around in, the, in that open source community. Uh, we had been discussing around the, the, to conform um, a working group within the Eclipse Foundation, because one of the questions that hasn't reached the chat yet is, okay, Cesar, what happened if at some point one of these, and let me share back my screen, what happened if at some point um, any of these specifications are mature enough to be part of the Jakarta EE um, specific set of specifications, right? How do you graduate that from microfile to Jakarta EE? So that is still something that uh, is, dri is driving uh, feedback from, from the community. But before making that discussion, uh, the important part is how all that process it needs to be managed. And for that is where these discussions around the um, working group is happening as we are uh, speaking literally right now. And microprofile was, um, why did the community feel the need to create microprofile? What, what was missing that we didn't Good question. Have? Excellent question, Barry. Uh, so it was around 2016 when, you know, um, we have, we, and this has, this, the history has been repeated again. I always think that life is a, is a, is a circle, uh, like, 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 like in cards, did you see it? But, um, you know, when, when you start analyzing back, the short answer is to modernize uh, Java Enterprise. That will be like the short version of, of the answer. Uh, the need for, for my, the, the response that Microfile came to provide to the industry is uh, mod, uh, the modernization of, of Java Enterprise, but keeping without, uh, without losing the approach of having openness to, uh, to, to vendors and open source project to implement it and uh, provide to, in this case, GBR, for example, Raphael with the, with the, with the project, uh, they are, to, to keep them able to have uh, huge options of which implementation they will like to use and later migrate from another implementation if that will the case needed, or if the software is being sold, uh, to, to be deployed in whatever application server you have, in whatever cloud you have. Uh, so for, for reaching that point, uh, we, will need to, we will need to have uh, that modernization in the same openness as Java EE had been doing it for the last uh, 20 years. Um, and so, so was there any thought about extending Java EE, uh, uh, Jakarta EE? Yeah, Java uh, Jakarta. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And and, and keep in mind that if you compare to, uh, with with your previous question, um, if if you compare the um, release cadence of Java EE, um, it it was four, five, six years, depending on where where you where you check the the, the reference. And and in this case for Microfile, that was one of the things that the community wanted to have faster releases. Something similar happened later with the JDK, uh, but um, in, in this case, that actually allowed the, the, the community to shape the process that has been driving Microprofile to, to perform even four releases in one year. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, feel free to keep um, sending the questions in the chat, uh, either on Zoom or on YouTube. So the next question that when, when, when we were working with Raphael, it's obviously where, which application server you, you, you would like to migrate because in, in this case for GVR system, it include a migration. Uh, so in this case, uh, we choose Apache Tommy. For those who as, is the first time you're hearing, basically you can think of Apache Tommy like Apache Tomcat plus Java EE. Apache, Apache Tomcat by itself is a server container, uh, but uh, when you add the Java EE, or I will say Jakarta EE, uh, specification that is you have a full uh, web profile which get actually certified um, and also a full profile um, is built from Apache components um, micro profile compliant that's why we are here talking about uh, the footprint and important for you if you are currently um, an, 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 an Apache Tommy user or are evaluating we just released uh, the, the open source project just released the milestone release number two for the um, version number nine, which contained this crucial, I will call this 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 point in history of, of Java E, now Jakarta E, which is the the, 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 the namespace change from Javax to Jakarta. So if you have an application, and this is something that we discussed with, with Rafael at the beginning of the year, when we were planning the strategy for the next modules to be migrated and, and modern, modernized, um, that we will see this change coming. 
So right now, uh, for, for, the, for the missing module, uh, the goal is to include this migration as part of the step because then you don't want to you know, be like the, like the mouse in the spinning wheel trying to migrate something by, that by the time you migrate or you think you modernize, you ended up realizing that now you have to do another step to increase the compatibility of your, of your system with modern application servers. And in this case, the Javax namespace uh, to Jakarta namespace is plays a really key part in, in the entire roadmap. More information about Apache Tommy in Apache uh, in Tommy Apache uh, org. The flavor that we use for this project in the past two years is about uh, is is for Tommy Jack's RS microprofile, and as you can see here, you still if you are a Java EE, um, um, uh, if you are used to to to, to hear Java EE specifications. You still have Java server pages, Java servlet, enterprise Java, Ruby, Java mail API. So again, microprofile, as, as Barry called it, um, it provides this extension of functionality to your current uh, Java enterprise applications to provide modernization. Uh, last but not least, in Tometry, we have, this is not open source, this is actually a product dedicated for, 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 for the industry in terms of API gateways. So we added this as part of the microservice architecture. I'm pretty sure that when you navigate throughout the arch uh, microservice architecture for the part of the system that applies to actually migrate, because that's another topic also, if you want to migrate everything to microservices. So the, the analysis that we did, okay, the parts of the system that we are actually transferred to microservices uh, needs to be secure, road ba load balance and routing uh, by API Gateway, and in this case, this system that we have been describing with Raphael um, is using the TriStream API Gateway. Um, we are going to jump now to to this new part of, of the presentation. I will call it because the last part, the, la the last time we we present this session was back in, in San Francisco at Code One, and 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 the the, the whole uh, pandemic uh, situation hasn't uh, arose as it is right now, um, so. Rafael, if you can drive us through how the migration of the system and the modernization of the system allow, um, allow to, to really test if the microprofile adoption was something that, 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 that actually improved uh, the life cycle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing here so you can go ahead. Okay. okay. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, go ahead. So we, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, uh, the council uh, saw that the patients uh, were isolated from the doctors and the telemedicine or remote medicine becomes very important issue inside the council and the medical community. So how they, they make prescriptions? Normally you go to the doctor and, make, and they make prescription by hand. Piece of paper, a pen, and make the prescription and, and deliver to the patients. And now they are remotely separated. So how? Uh, to make this prescription with security, uh, uh, especially with the sensitive data, you know. So we received the 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 the, the, the specification of the problem in one Friday. The next Friday, we put the first version in homologation and then Saturday, uh, a day before, a day, a, a day, the next day we put in production. So five days of the development using REST APIs. We use some APIs that we had ready for login, security, uh, search in the database and and we use uh, the sensitive data protection with attribute converter. So the data in the database is totally cryptographic. 
Uh, and we make integration with this doc doctor space login, our um, federal companies database, pharmacies database, and Google Authenticator to fact with two, two factor authentication to give more security to the process in five days because we had a few APIs ready and we construct another one. So micro profile uh, helps us a lot in this, this case. So the doctor uh, emits digital prescription to the patient that receive and validate within pharmacy. Okay. And This is the this is example of the digital prescription. Here we, that we have uh, patient data and here the, the, the medicine and below the QR code with the link to pharmacy makes the validation. Today we have uh, more than al almost 200,000 prescriptions made in, in south of Brazil with the system. Two months, two, three months, I think it's running. Here, an example, the use of the converter. There's some, some, some attributes we use, we, we had to put, to increase the security. Okay, because we, we're dealing with the, the, the patient's data. Okay. We make some dashboards. This number is, <laughs> this is old, is the, the, the last presentation. Uh, we have Kibana here with some dashboards, the requests. And here, one uh, admin panel to see how many prescriptions we made, they made. For, for, for all of those familiar already with MicroProfile, um, one of the advantages that, 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 that we realized when we were implementing this uh, fast response that uh, we need to perform uh, because of the pandemic was, to use microprofile metrics to implement, um, you know, if, if, if you go back to the previous light profile, do you, when when imagine that today uh, there is a meeting and they are gonna say, okay, you need to integrate uh, more than um, 100 new providers with different requirements for how to connect. Okay, it's gonna be intran, uh, it's gonna be dedicated uh, connections, or it's gonna be, um, you know, uh, VPNs. Uh, they are using REST. They are using this. They are using that. They are gonna give you Swagger uh, or Open API. So at the same time, we need to provide some kind of monitoring to to see how we, well we were interacting, and in order to also escalate uh, the, the current support and infrastructure monitoring team to start receiving calls from those plus 100 new providers and pharmacies that will be using and consuming our services. So um, this is a, a really uh, nice example of how microfile metrics in this case allow us to, to escalate along with the API gateway uh, that visibility and create custom dashboards that at the end just are, are just consuming the, what the API, what the microservices are uh, are, are reporting via micro home metrics, but uh, this was something that in the previous system it will take like I don't know uh, maybe a month and a half for doing all the all the query of, of SQL and all the database. So this 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 is really this was really nice uh, example of of micro file metrics how how they it scaled. So we have a question here: Were there were some parts of micro profile more applicable to the COVID nineteen problem than others? and other parts that you didn't really need to use because it was the COVID-19 problem? Did any well, surprises arise in that yeah. respect? Yeah, that that's a good that's a good question, and I think I I, I I respond half of the half of the question already with giving the example of microfile metrics. That was it. It's been it it, it it was used before, 
But that uh, definitely is one of the APIs that we think uh, the community that 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 we all create this thing to to be available by that time. Uh, in terms of saying that we had an API for microfile that we didn't use because of code being nineteen, I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't say that was the case for 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 these systems. Um, but um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you have any any, any input on that one, Rafael. But uh, from my from my point of view, um, there there was not a case to say, okay, we are not going to use this because this API because uh, or we are going to stop using this API because of the code be nineteen response. Uh, are you asking me? Yes, 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 yes. I don't know if you agree with me or or if you have more more context about it. Oh, the, the 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 whole problem is that the 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 COVID nineteen put the complexity in medical medical practice. Okay. So we we need to to give a response to the doctors and the patients quickly, and we need to to use the APIs of the, the pharmacies that integrates with the federal company, the federal bureau, that database to see, to check if that company, that pharmacy is real, you know? Because we have some fake uh, pharmacies too. And we and have some more questions coming in. Um, does micro profile have support for Swagger? The answer is um, yes. Remember that it has the ball in terms of the Swagger to open API. And uh, let me let me share my screen here. And remember that from one of the microprofile APIs we have uh, open API. So the answer is yes um, for open API. I will call it. Um, yeah, that's 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 the reply. And what about micro profile JWT for quick security around medical data? Yes. Yeah, that 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 was what um, Rafael was was describing. That's a good question. You know, with with the security, the the the, the, the other challenge of that. Um, let me go back to this slide. The, the the other challenge was how how to authenticate with this new one plus one hundred systems, right? Um, and how we also provide how to how we authenticate with them was one thing, and then also how we allow them to authenticate with the, with the, with our system. So definitely, J, Microfile JWT for those who is the first time you're listening, this is JSON Web Tokens uh, based on OAuth 2.0. Um, definitely play a, a key role uh, to integrate. And remember that I mentioned the the, the API gateway, the Tristream API gateway. So basically, uh, if, if I have to resume how that works, basically you have one request coming from, from let's say, pharmacy number one, that, that is the new one from the 100, and they need they need to pass that API gateway that, that uses this modern mechanism of OAuth 2.0 with JSON Web Tokens, um, and then Treat that um, treat that uh, authentication and authorization, and then behind the API gateway, I, I am making a bunch of signs here with my hands. So you have the request from from the from the pharmacy. The API gateway received this modern mechanism of authentication, and then if there there was part of the system that was still not uh, modernized, I will call it with microfile JWT, the API gateway take care of doing that translation of authorization and authentication. In the same way, people using some other mechanisms for authentication, we also filter that throughout the API gateway. Um, Rafael also mentioned that uh, the microprofile, even uh, JWT, even allow us to incorporate the HTTP signatures, which is like a second layer of security around these whole mechanisms of JSON Web Tokens. So each HTTP request that is coming from uh, the these these third party systems is being also uh, being secured with HTTP signatures. Um, that, that is a complete uh, session for explaining how everything works in the sense of microprofile JWT. But uh, again, 
That is something that if you go right now to Jakarta EEA, there is no specification that take care of it. So obviously microfile for security, the modern, the, the modern microfile architectures uh, is, 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 is your first option, I will, call, I will say, if you want to continue with your assets of, 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 of what you have in your, in your IT. And I promised myself that I wouldn't do more interrupting with questions, but I've got one more that I want to slip in before you continue. Go ahead. Uh, what does the deployment look like? For instance, is Tom EE running in a Kubernetes cluster or something similar? Yeah, that that that's also a good question. And we were talking about uh, a, a couple of weeks ago with Rafael about it. Um, right now, uh, Rafael mentioned for some of, of the consoles that is running on a Google Cloud. Um, is running on top of Docker containers, but is not being orchestrated yet by Kubernetes. So uh, that is still some of the things that were requested from other, um, I would call it IT departments that are going to run this software. And, and, that, and that is still as part of the roadmap of, of this living system. Um, but then uh, we also need to, to reply to not just Google's but uh, other schemas also. But um, you know the, the flexibility that micro micro profile and and being being able to modernize an existing Java uh, enterprise application uh, doesn't have basically haven't give us any headache in thinking about how the deployment will will be executed uh, by any other. We just need to take the requirements and we will provide the. The, the necessary, um, you know, the, the necessary documentation that we are uh, actively working on. Rafael, do you have more, more on that one in terms of the deployments? So we put the, we use Docker inside a virtual machine in Google Cloud and in Rio Grande do Sul, uh, they don't use, they don't want to use Google Cloud. So we create a VMware machine over there and create the same, uh, the same. It's like a cloud inside. A hypervisor the, in, in a, an on-premise, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. hypervisor and on-premise. Yeah, so, so that, that, that's why the hybrid that's, approach the, was the tested. The next step right? is to use Kubernetes, the next step for some, for some servers. We have another one. Um, where can a developer get started with Tommy and MicroProfile? That's a good question also. So uh, my my recommendation will be to, let me see if I, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, go to tommy.apache.org. Um, in there you will find um, more than, I, I think by, by far is the, but I, I think we, we, we are the largest example of, of, open, uh, of open source um, Java, uh, Java enterprise and, and examples. And, and we have a, in the documentation section a bunch of examples about just for micro profile. Um, let me give you an example here. So if you go here to documentation, how do you can learn both at, at the same time Apache Tommy and um, and MicroProfile? Uh, we have this also going on about the translation. So um, for for those who are uh, uh, Spanish spoken or uh, Portuguese um, uh, contributors, they can also find the, the example. So in this section of the example, if you filter with MicroProfile. We have a bunch of examples that are you can run um, analyzed independently from from each other. Uh, so many of the things that we have discussed here about JWT, beam validation, metrics, open tracing with the swagger questions, uh, you can just go there. Uh, you have the definition of what 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 needs to be done to run the code. Um, and let me give you another example here. For example. Here for learning micro fault tolerance because in the microfile website you will find what the specification is and all that, but actually the code and 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 examples like in this case what you're seeing on your screen you can find it here. Um, in one addition that was that was made a couple of weeks ago in the community of Tommy was to improve the website to have actually um, all the APIs that you can find in this example. 
So you, that is really useful for these cases where you have your team trying to see how it integrates the, with, with current uh, specification within your architecture. Um, so yeah, this is one example of how you can really boost. Uh, it, it uses maybe Tommy Maven plugin. So basically, you just need Maven Java, and you just run Maven Tommy run, and everything pop ups, and you can start debugging and 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 playing around with. I don't know if we have another questions. And yeah, uh, for Tommy, yeah, also the mailing list uh, for sure. There is a community section on the website. Um, in, in which you can uh, subscribe to the dev uh, mailing list of Tommy and feel free to jump in and and make as many questions as you want uh, and and we are it's a great community to start contributing also to open source along with micro profile okay do we have another questions or do we can we go back to the I think we're good for now okay how are in terms of timing let me go back here to my screen okay so in terms of lessons learned so far in the journey um doing this mo modernization um parenthesis uh migration uh if, if we are going to center the, the lesson learns around each of the microprofile APIs, we have, for example, microprofile uh, config. Um, wait, something happened here. Okay, let me go back to full screen. Yeah. So in, in terms of, um, um, I am still sharing, yes. First, the sensitive information uh, within project files uh, where where how, how to guard that information was improved and bringing back the, the questions about the deployments also how the, the the legacy system as i will call it will be integrated with this uh, you know modern using docker secrets and all these approaches of externalizing your configuration outside of the system and not even delegated to the application server but actually to the runtime in this case docker containers and later kubernetes so microprofile config it, it provides a baseline for that and it's, it has been really helpful in the in that regard uh, the complex properties, as, as I as I indicated, and the, the, the environmental infrastructure, as I just described it, also was before implementing this was really painful, and now open us uh, a, a lot of possibilities in terms of infrastructure integration. Um, this is the after what I just described, containerly, container friendly, um, and the scaling also is the is is a is a default, right? Just a sneak, pre, a sneak uh, example of what microprofile config can 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 be done. This is actually coming from from the system. So in this case, uh, if you are aware, this is the same at inject annotation that we have been using. Uh, but then you start seeing this at config property. In these cases, to dynamically change, you know, the log level, uh, a common case scenario. Um, if you enable some kind of a specific login, login for one particular piece of the software when, that you know that at some point uh, it will require aud auditing or if you will um, provide more information to the day that you have in production and other partner being integrated. So when that happens, our, our monitoring team needs to be aware of what's going on more detail because they're going to receive calls if something goes wrong. Um, so in this case, with, with microprofile, microprofile config, um, it's as simple as just declare this annotation on top of a Boolean. It will take a default value of true. You can ch change all that. There is another new thing that you will see here. We are also injecting the JSON web token, if you're familiar with um, with JWT and the OAuth 2. Flow uh, security workflow, so we can actually have information about the the, the claim that is coming from that uh, HTTP request passing the API gateway and then sending that information to 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 the microservices or the or the REST services as I will call them. So it's 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 really simple as you can see here. New things that I need to learn, Cesar. Well, do you have it here? one then the two new annotations and everything else is the same code that you may already have so it's just a matter of understanding what the api does 
what is the problem that you have? And then you choose how to integrate the API that can fix your and help you to fix that. Um, okay, health check uh, plus metrics. Um, previously, the system ha had a big lack of coverage until, uh, in terms of trying to add these um, APM systems of application performance management. If you were, are aware with the term, that, that is something that has been around in the industry for quite a long time. Um, but now, when 10 years ago, the whole microservices thing started, you know, new, new, new challenge arose. So the dispersed monitoring was still something that we knew at the beginning of the project that we need to tackle. Uh, how to trace what I just explained, how to trace, for example, which type of security this HTTP, this specific HTTP request use it or is using if you are monitoring live. All that is visibility that you are starting to require once you are migrating to a distributed uh um, uh, di distributed microservice architecture, or as in our case, one big system it started to be just one section being migrated to microservices. Um, and obviously um, reactive in most of the cases, because um, usually we receive the, the support team receive a call saying, okay, uh, we, don't, uh, we have issues trying to send this information to your system, or we want to consume th this information. And then you have the usual troubleshooting to try to understand, uh, not to finger point it, but actually trying to understand where is the issue. So uh, when, when you are in a situation with, when you receive those calls and you don't have the information right on the top of your fingers, you are being reactive, right? Because you, proactively you, you will say, okay, your, 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 your claim is indicating that you changed something in your role, in your jot, and we are rejecting all your requests. So that is something that now we can do uh, with the integration of, of health checks and my profile metrics. Um, this is also a common question that I am anticipating. What's the difference between health check and metrics? With microfile health check, think of this like uh, uh, liveness or uh, that you already have on something like Kubernetes when actually the services are able to, to tell you, okay, I am in a, in a good status or I am down. And that is, doesn't mean that you are not receiving requests because your microservice can be down because it depends of three more calls to three more microservices. And one of those microservices are taking longer to respond. So that is affects the quality of service that you are receiving or actually providing to the consumer of your microservices. So um, health check, you think of that, like the, the, the status of that microservices and metrics is a more deep into um, uh, analyzing trends, proactively detect that you are receiving uh, an authorized authentication coming with this uh, with this type of JOTs. Uh, so in that case, it's more proactive and you can check, for example, how many, as, as um, Rafael was describing, uh, how many prescription has this particular pharmacy ha has provided in the last 24 hours. So before sending that, as, as we used back in the days to the DBA and go into the database and everything, now we have modern monitoring with metric, microprofile integrated with the API gateway and all that being tracked in um, Elasticsearch as the engine for as I will call no no SQL data, right? Um, this is a little bit of what uh, microprofile health check is all about. Um, new uh, new annotations. If we go uh, we go deep into code. You have, for example, this health health annotation. This is microprofile specific application scope. This is the same that we had been using. This is not not nothing new, and this is this implement health check is basically how we are customizing our health check. And for that, we need to provide some context to the, to the, to the health check uh, validation that MicroProfile will evaluate and will reply back when we are going to consume that endpoint that now each microservice it will have within our infrastructure. In this case, we are saying, we are actually calling uh, an entity, an entity manager. And uh, we are injecting it. And then we have this override the health check response call, which is basically the method that is going to be executed every time we are going to knock the door of that microservice and ask, hey, how, how, how do you feel, right? So he's going to perform that snip of logic and he's going to reply it us back. In this case, if uh, the select asterisk from, uh, select a star from dual, uh, commonly know, um, a SQL query, if everything is fine, it's going to say, okay, please reply, everything is fine. Or otherwise it will say, okay, 
uh, I, I, I was not able to perform this query, something is happening, or if something even worse is happening in terms of not just even connect to the database or something like that, if you have a, an exception, you are able to also uh, reply with that and provide that within the payload of the health check response. So this is a, this is a, a really common uh, scenario. But it can be expanded to even more nowadays with the with, with the healthcare uh, checks uh, that that we have um, within, within the health health system. Uh, you know you need to be aware that uh, one pharmacy is uh, uh, available, but the other one no. You need to have a dashboard for that, and in this case, having microfile health checks um, also help you to reply to them how your services are currently behaving. Um, Rafael, can you give us an insight of these uh, um, screens uh, that are related with the microfile health check? Please. So we here we put the health check and create some routes in the tag that we call the that route in different services. And then health check gave us the information that is online or offline. Some we, we check uh, a, a LGAP database and check uh, AGB port 2 and check uh, the distributed database, Oracle database, if it's running or not. Uh, that first one uh, called fiscalization CFM, uh, we check in Brazil if the system is running or not. Depends on that uh, response of that health check. Basically, we use health check here. And we make a, I mean, made a, an application that we register the, the different health checks and the interface uh, show to us uh, dynamic uh, if the system is up and down or down. Thank you. Um, in terms of um, JWT authentication, I already covered part of this with the question that we got early. Uh, before we were using basic HTTP authentication with session management. Obviously, then you have the, the, the challenges of if you're using uh, RESTful web services uh, in a microservice architecture, you, you need the stateless security. Um, how you're going to handle the integration or the authentication and authorization between microservices. Um, and, 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 you know, to have this overhead of an LDAP or a database, which is going to hold all the, um, uh, as a single point of failure, all the um, the users of the system with their with their credentials. So with Microfile JWT, we were able to simply integrate um, the OAuth 2.0 uh, workflow, uh, which give us security, a stateless security. Uh, we added again the HTTP signatures to provide even more security in and in terms of uh, 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 authorization and authentication between the communication internally in our in, a, in an infrastructure with the microservices. Uh, and this allows us to escalate also because, you know, the, um, this concept of, of the state was keep on the server and the pointer on the client side means that uh, if you have, if you, the, um, the providers can have the JOTs and they can also validate if the JOT is, has expired already or not, right? And, 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 and in this case, they, they don't need uh, to every time to go to uh, the infrastructure and ping that LDAP or make a query on the database. This is a snip of code about what Microfile JWT may look. Um, in this case, you still have the normal inject annotation. Uh, this is a Microfile specific um, class. In this case, uh, JSON Web Token. That means that with this uh, with this injection, you have this attribute within your code that you can actually, after you uh, secure uh, one specific um, method of the entire or, or our entire RESTful web services, you can actually have information that travels between that token when someone is making a request and making and, and, and authenticating and authorizing inside of the system. 
Um, we are using here microphone config to enable the log. This is the same example as we described it previously. But the takeaway from here is that, for example, we can say that if the token is equal null, that means it's not an, 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 an authenticated. Um, you, we need to report this, or if the token claim is different, that email uh, and is, and, and basically is not present. If the claim within the JOT uh, mail is not present, we need to, we, we, maybe for our business purpose, we don't need to reject, but we need to inform that someone within the, within the claim is not sending that required part of information. So this is when security and, and more the, 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 the aspect of um, authorization, you can really fine grained uh, manage how, what do you want to read and what to do with that information. This also, um, this, this also allows us with the COVID-19 response to have more integration with existing systems. Uh, Rafael, can you give us a little bit an overview of what this Dynamed uh, Reference Center and Medline uh, means? Okay, the, this is uh, those are uh, database to search to research, so doctors can uh, make search on those data database uh, about many many topics in the medicine. So. The South Council uh, asked us to, so the, this service, those services are paid and they have a address, web address, HTTP address with the password in the, the, in the, in the, address, in the address, visible, you know? And they ask us to, to hide this, this address uh, and put inside doctor space. That is a model that we have. So uh, the uh, different, the Dynamed put the password in the address. Medline, no, they need login and they have a key. So we use tag API gateway and create a, a root. Uh, and put the password inside the tag, okay? And the Medline, you put the, the key. And then we use client, uh, microprofile uh, client, and create and inject in our system. So only uh, doctors authenticated in our system can access Dynamed, Medline, that counts you paid for, you know? So that we very good for us and they were very satisfied with the solution that we gave to us. And it was very quick to, to, to make this solution in production. So one, two days, I think. Thank you. You mentioned REST client and... REST client, REST client. Yeah, that's, that's right. So uh, when we're talking about REST client, before obviously we used a normal JAXA REST client, uh, which is not type safe by definition. Um, there needs to be this understanding when you have new developers, how to actually consume. You can create facades and, and do some other workarounds, but you know, the, in, in, in the sense of trying to also provide the... To, the um, tool set to your new developers within your organization to speed up the process of consuming existing services. Uh, it's something that we, we wanted to, to do from, right from the beginning and it paid uh, at the end in, in this COVID-19 situation. So with the, with the adoption of the REST client uh, uh, microprofile, uh, basically it's a type safe approach. That means that in the same way you are, for you as an object oriented programming, uh, developer is really nature for you to say, okay, from the pharmacies dot, uh, get me the latest order, something like that. So that is more, 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 more um, practical for doing from an object oriented point of view. And also when we are creating new services, uh, the pharmacist in this example needs to develop the, the code that is going to consume those services. 
But if we want to provide um, and, and give the extra mile and also, you know, uh, making sure they're going to properly consume the web service and all that, uh, with Microfile REST Client, you basically, you took the, um, the interface uh, of your REST endpoint, your definition, and you use that one to create automatically for you with the, Red, with the Microfile REST Client, uh, the consumption of, of, of the client, I will call it. Um, we also uh, are using header propagation. That means that um, there is something that is coming from the JOT, from the JSON web token in the OAuth 2. Point fl flow workflow uh, that is being handled as part of what the REST client logic is is is, is using. Um, so that allowed the, the smooth JWT propagation. If we want to see how Microfile REST client look in this in this context. Um, we have, again, this is the new, I will call the new annotation. And in the same way you have uh, your current, uh, if you go and check one of your current uh, JAXRS endpoints, you will see that you have uh, your public uh, post consumes annotations, uh, your header param and everything. But what you need to do for, uh, for creating a REST client in minutes, and I will, I'm literally saying minutes, is um, after adding obviously the dependencies or making sure your your deployment environment supports microfile is actually you can create an interface and you have the same code that actually you create you 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 develop to create the, the microservices the the the, the rest uh, web services and just by adding this annotation you are actually telling to microfile please create a, a rest client a tie safe REST client with this contract, with this interface, and that automatically allow you to consume your own web services or create a client for your own web services that you currently have uh, with, 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 the, with the help of Microfile REST client. And that has been really useful, as I call it, for, for one delivering um, to, 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 to third parties, not just this is the endpoint, this is the open API documentation, uh, but actually, there is your jar file that includes whatever you need to consume our web service. Um, this is another example. Um, this is how you will, will normally see the the the, the REST client. Uh, in this case, you 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 you're going to tell me, Cesar, but this looks like I am developing a REST services, and the answer is yes. But notice that this is an interface, and I am not actually implementing the logic because that's what the actual um, uh, web service does, but here what we are doing is uh, providing this to Microfile REST client uh, to allow it to pro to to create a type safe REST uh, API uh, client for us. Um, yeah, I will. I will. And and how how do you use it? Well, in this case, uh, I, I will I will say okay. We have uh, the annotation inject. We have this doctor resource client. Remember, this is the name of the um, of the interface, and then we just inject the, the REST client and we say okay. We are we want this um, this object to be able to consume our web services with whatever the contract in the interface uh, stated, and then we we can do normal uh, type safe uh, operation. Like for example, get REST client get doctors that will make a request quest to the web services and voila you have your your normal iteration over that uh barry you are on mute do we have another question well what i want to do is see um if there are any other questions in the chat um if not i have a wrap-up question um post questions in the chat if you still have others um in the meantime i want to ask you about the future uh if we if the world is in good shape, then COVID-19 will go away at some time in the future, hopefully the near future. Um, but there's always a need for good health care um, in Brazil and in other countries all over the world. Um, do you have medium term or long term plans for this system, especially as it relates to micro profile and microservices? Yeah, that, thank, thank you for, for, for the question. I will answer the technical one first, so I will let Rafael to, to, to second the, the, the overall internal Brazil roadmap. But from the technical point of view, you know, we have the challenge for this uh, unmigrated un and not yet uh, modernized module uh, to adopt the, the, the migration from the Javax to Jakarta namespace. That's, that's, that's huge. That's something that definitely needs to, needs to be done. 
and eventually all the other models will join. Uh, the um, when 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 the previous question when we were talking about the Kubernetes and the deployment approach, you know the system needs to be up to date with whatever cloud provider is coming next, right? Or the the the, the next um, uh, federal council will say. Uh, Okay, we are not going to use uh, hypervision on premise. We are not going to use Google Cloud. We need this specific requirement. So that for uh, that that is part of the this living second version of the system, this second wave of the system, and that is something that we always need need to take care of when we are making technical decisions in terms of the technical roadmap. I will I will say it. Uh, that is from the technical point of view. Two things that I can mention, Barry, in in terms of what is on the roadmap. Uh, keep adopting more cloud providers. That doesn't mean we need to spend another two years redoing everything. It's just a matter of testing what we can only have with the current infrastructure. Rafael, can um, you in, please? In the, 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 the business side or the the the, 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 the evolution of the, the, the solution, the whole solution between uh, during COVID-19 and after. So we we plan to to improve our front end with new technologies and put some integ integrations interaction with the patients and doctors so our system is more uh, applied to the government the uh, government sector council and school and now we're gonna put solutions inside the medical practice and the other hand, we need we during this refactoring that we are doing, uh, uh, we plan to use this model to other professions because many professions has conscious. They are uh, uh, disciplined professions, so we can use this same solution to other professions here in Brazil, in, to engineers, to architects, to contabilists, to physiotherapists, you know. Oh, I don't know if I answered the question. Yes, I, I think you did. Okay. All right. Uh, have anything else to present to Are you good? Uh, we are just uh, uh, one slide away from 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 wrap up the the, the, the presentation, um, and it's related with the, with the previous question about um, does Microprofile has something to document or or provide documentation about how my red services work, right? So this is just a, a screenshot of what is the output that you get once you instrument your microservices or your JAXRS web services uh, with Microprofile uh, Open API. And, and this is the Swagger UI that we have seen for the last couple of years uh, that for all of those that had been involved. And if this is the first time you're seeing, the, you're seeing this, I invite you to, to, to check the open API, run the, the, the examples that we have on the Apache Tommy project, and you will see how easy it is to document and provide that to your internal um, consumers or your external consumer of your um, microservices or JAXRS uh, web services. Um, that, that, that's pretty much um, from, from our side. Um, thank you very much again for having us. Uh, for having the opportunity to present this use case, as I call it. Um, so far, it has been a success. Uh, even before, before the pandemic, uh, we were really um, uh, eager to, to, to modernize applying MicroProfile, and, and now we are eager to adopt uh, Jakarta EE9, uh, but that requires some other steps. And uh, as we mentioned a couple minutes ago, uh, the roadmap looks... Uh, looks looks really really great and with a lot of challenges as always because that that's that's the fun of being an engineer you know you have challenge to resolve and, Absolutely. and yeah and, and at the same time they have the having a, a, an, an impact in the society and in this case uh, uh, the Brazilian healthcare systems that, that's good very good uh, uh, go ahead Rafael. sorry uh... One thing that I want to say is that the, we chose Microprofile Jakarta E because it is a community solution. Uh, we had many ways, different ways to solve 
our problem. But we chose to use MicroProfile, the standardized solution. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you very much. I just want to make a, one quick announcement. Um, the NY Java SIG uh, is the oldest Java user group in the world. Uh, we were founded in September uh, 1995, so right after Java. So we will be celebrating 25 years in September. Uh, we are preparing a very nice event for you on September 23rd, so reserve the dates. We're going to send more details, but we're going to have an amazing event on a panel uh, with the best people around Java. Okay, so reserve the dates. Here on Twitter, that's how you can find more about it, how to subscribe, how to be notified about the event. So please follow us on Twitter. Uh, Caesar or Rafael, the presentation was very good. I hope everyone enjoyed uh, it was very nice. I learned a lot from both of you uh, from this presentation. I would like to thank everyone that joined us tonight, uh, especially Amelia and the V Blue Wings. Uh, so for those who don't know, they are uh, great contributors of the Jakarta E, advocates uh, of, of Jakarta E. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, 